So when it comes to my drone build, one of the, the most important things for me has been uh, 3D printing, luckily. Uh, with having like a GoPro and batteries and it doesn't really make sense to just like strap things on all the time But luckily I have a friend here. His name's Alex. He works for 3M. He's an engineer and uh, he knows everything about 3D printing <laughs> Maybe not everything. Not everything. But yeah, luckily I picked up FreeCAD pretty quick uh, So we kind of have this agreement where I can uh, basically CAD anything I want and he will uh, print it for me as long as he doesn't have to do any of the design work so we're here today, we're printing Mark II for my drone after the crash. Uh, Mark I broke anyway, so it was a good time to make a new, a, a, a new backpack for, is what I call it, for my drone. But we're here, we're about to set up the GoPro to print it, but we thought it might be a good time to let him maybe explain some of the things that kind of help with uh, this type of uh, this, this type of 3D printing because it's high speeds, there's crashes. So, I mean, really, I don't know anything that's going on, but can you tell them kind of what we're doing for materials and stuff like that? Sure, sure. So like Jordan said, he's taking care of all the design work. And when you're working with 3D printing, uh, typically you're gonna have to start with a CAD design that you're gonna draw on a computer. You send it through a software called a slicer. And then so Jordan just sends me a part. I slice it on the computer, it takes about a minute. Uh, and then we send that file to the computer, or rather to the 3D printer. And the 3D printer just chugs away and prints it layer by layer until the, the part is finished up. And, and we, can, we can use different materials. We started with things like PLA, polylactic acid. This is a, a kind of a stiff, really cheap, really easy to use uh, plastic material. But it wasn't the right material for a drone because it's, it's fairly brittle. And when you're flying around at high speeds like Jordan, uh, you need something that is a bit tougher and more resilient that has some flexibility. So we moved to a material that's kind of rubber-like, and uh, uh, it's called Ninja Flex. Actually, is a, is a brand, and and so when we use this stuff, it's, it seems to be behaving quite well. Right, because the PLA version we did, I actually flew it on my drone, Mark 0.5, because um, <laughs> that was just the test. Because it's just easier to print on PLA, because PLA prints a little bit faster. It, it prints faster. It's really easy to use. It almost never clogs. It's really cheap. Uh, I had some laying around, and so uh, uh, right. in general, that's the go-to for I would for for a, a beginner with 3D printing. Yeah, and I broke it the first flight, but uh, I was able to put a GoPro on and make sure it was going to work. Um, and then we went to uh, the Ninja Flex, and yeah, total big difference. Not even in the same realm where it's, it can take hits and stuff like yeah, that. It, and I hit the ground a lot. So. <laughs> it's much more difficult to print. You have to print very slow with it typically. Uh, the nozzle can have a tendency to clog because the material itself is so flexible as it wants to move through the through the extruder. Uh, it can it can sort of wind up and jam the machine. So you definitely have to print slowly, but it's uh, it's doable as long as as long as we take it slow. Right, because how long is Mark II going to take? Uh, the estimate from our slicing software it says 23 hours. Right. So we're going to turn it on. We've got confidence in the printer; it'll run all night, hopefully, and uh, we'll wake up and and have a nearly finished part. Right, which will be good. Um, but yeah, but with this Mark II, like I have a full battery enclosure. Um, I have a super complicated GoPro part where it's it's a case that almost covers the complete GoPro. It has little fingers to hold on the ND filters. Um, so it's, it's it's a lot different than, uh, than, than what I've been using in the past, which is why it's jumped up, what, 16 hours longer yeah. to print and stuff like that. But the, the nice thing with 3D printing in general is it's, as long as you've saved your design and you might make minor tweaks to it in the future if something doesn't fit quite right, if you want to add a GPS module in the future, right. modify the design, send me an email. I just press go. I mean, it's it's literally less than five minutes of my time to slice the part, send it to the printer and press go. And then 24 hours later, we've got a part. Right, which is super nice. Um, and just because if, I mean, if you don't have a buddy that has a 3D printer, there are places out there that will charge you by the hour. So then you really want to be conscious of, you know, how long the print's going to take. But that's definitely an option. I know Race Day Quads does it, uh, where you can go on and you can actually just send them an STL file and they'll print it. And they use a TPU. It might not be Ninja. What's TPU stand for? Uh, thermoplastic polyurethane. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. But it's a uh, TPU is just what a catch all term for like the more flexible stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. So they, they, they use some kind of T, T, TPU type product. Um, but there are other options where you can actually just go on and buy like GoPro mounts. Some frames have uh, some you can buy that, you know, fit into the screws and stuff like that. But for mine, there wasn't an option. 
I wasn't gonna double side tape my GoPro to my drone or anything like that. So with this Mark II, uh, it integrates with the bolt holes that are in the frame. So it's super solid. Uh, the GoPro rides a little bit better because of that and it's super rigid. But uh, well, do you wanna tell them maybe a little bit about the, the 3D printer you're using or what there is out there for 3D printers? Sure. Uh, I've had my printer for several years now. It's called a PrinterBot Simple Metal. Uh, unfortunately, they have gone out of business, but they started out on Kickstarter maybe 10 years ago or so, and uh, and they sort of developed into a, a a pretty common beginner 3D printer and maybe in the $600 range at the time. And uh, it's about a six by six by six inch build volume, so it's fairly small. If you're not used to 3D printing, you know, you might think, oh, that's really a, what am I gonna do with a six inch cube? That's a pretty small build window. And as you go larger, the, the cost grows significantly. So that's the, that's the size that I picked. And uh, it, it's just been a really solid, very simple printer. And I built it from a kit uh, um, when I was in grad school and, and you know used it a ton right away. And now since it's been used sparingly, but it's really a great tool to have around the house for really uh, anything, anything that might come up, uh, you just never know what you might need a 3D printer for. Just walking around his house, he showed me like four things that have 3D printed parts attached to them, like his bike and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I mean, if you were going to get into it, if if I didn't know you and I had to buy a 3D printer, I mean, would I be talking couple, like three, four hundred bucks nowadays? Three, four hundred at least, I would say, uh, for a for a fairly small one. I think I would recommend. Uh, maybe even jumping into the six to eight hundred dollar range you can get a, a like a 12 inch cube almost and sometimes that size is the six by six by six size can be really prohibitive for for some of the parts that you may want to do because so i'm about maxing it out right you're, now. you're maxing it out with this part that we're about to print and so we we really can't grow it any larger uh, without making it a multi-piece right. construction and, and so i can't do having that. a larger printer for for you know maybe 800 bucks you can you can get a really good printer for for that price right now right well sweet well we are going to run this print um i mean 3d printing isn't for anyone but i mean it really can up your game a little bit just because it makes like i even still uh eject batteries constantly so i'm hoping this new uh this new piece that has a full battery enclosure will one protect my batteries a little bit and uh and hopefully keep it from ejecting because every time I eject a battery, I can't find my drone for a little bit. I have a beeper <laughs> on it, but I know one of these times I'm gonna lose my uh, my visual feed and I'm not gonna know where my drone is and it's gonna be it's gonna be listening for my beeper for a while. So hopefully that fixes that. Uh, but but yeah, so definitely look at 3D printing. I mean, it's not for everybody. I mean, how hard is the software to use to print? Uh, the software is pretty easy to learn. I think the, the most difficult piece is understanding design, how to draw with CAD. Right. Uh, picking a CAD software, you know, that's that that is the largest time commitment. The slicing software, specifically for 3D printing, is is very automatic. The, the, the programs that are out there, which are free, are, are really pretty easy to use. Right. So it's just whether or not you and I use FreeCAD. It's not amazing, but I mean, I'm able to make, make pretty complex yeah. parts that fit around my GoPro and my and my ND filters and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's not impossible, but that'd be a good place to start just to see if it's for you. And you can even go to a place, what is it, Thingiverse? Yeah, Thingiverse uh, is a website, thingiverse.com. You can download a whole bunch of uh, STL file format right. parts, and that's the, that's the format that you will need to 3D print something. And then I use a software called Cura, uh, which is made by the, the folks who make the Ultimaker 3D printer. Cura is a slicing software that will take the STL part file and slice it into many, many layers and then sends that, that set to your printer and gotcha. then your printer just prints layer by layer and reads those instructions. Alrighty, well, we are going to uh, get this print going and yeah, we'll show you what it looks like at the end. But uh, yeah, hopefully it turns out and it uh, works out the, there's a lot of new measurements on this. So hopefully I measured right, but we, we can, can always, always print, print again. We can always print another <laughs> one, so. All right, that's it, I'm done. That's enough talking about nerdy stuff.